Let's look at one last example. If you have liquid water and you want to change it into a solid or ice, you probably know that you simply have to place it in the freezer or leave it for several hours. As the temperature of the water drops, it will start forming ice just as the temperature of the water reaches zero degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius is a doubly special number because in addition to being the melting point of water, it is also the freezing point of water. So to review, a solid will keep its shape. A liquid will take the shape of whatever container it's in, and a gas will expand to fill any available space. Molecules move faster and faster the hotter they get, and they move slower the colder they get. The temperature of water causes water molecules in ice to move very little. Water molecules in liquid water move around each other, and for water molecules in steam, the water molecules separate from each other and move freely through the air. Now let's walk through a problem together. Here we start with a beaker of water. We will plan to cool and heat this water to change its state. Along the way, we'll measure the temperature and take notes at different time intervals. We'll record our results into a table. At the very beginning of our experiment, so at zero minutes, we place the beaker of water into the freezer. After 100 minutes, we'll take the beaker out of the freezer and place it on a hot plate. You can see that some of the temperatures and the notes are filled in, but that some are missing. So let's fill in the missing data together based on what we just learned about the heating and cooling of matter. We see that after we just place the beaker into the freezer, the water temperature is still room temperature or 23 degrees Celsius, and that in the next step after 50 minutes in the freezer, the water is still liquid. So we can assume that the notes in this section should say all liquid water. In the next empty space, we're missing temperature. We see that the water is still in the liquid state, so it has to be warmer than zero degrees Celsius. So I'll pick a temperature, 10 degrees Celsius, let's say, and we'll fill that in. After 100 minutes in the freezer, we see that the temperature has dropped all the way to negative four degrees Celsius. So we can assume that since it's colder than zero degrees Celsius, all of the water must be ice. At this point, we take the beaker out of the freezer and place it on a hot plate. After five minutes, we see that some water exists in the beaker, but also some ice. So it must still be at the melting point, which is zero degrees Celsius. After five more minutes, we see that the temperature has risen all the way to 44 degrees Celsius. Because that temperature is between zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, we know that there must be all liquid water in the beaker. After five more minutes, we see that we still have all liquid water and there has been nothing written about steam yet. So the temperature must not have risen to 100 degrees yet. So I'll write a temperature somewhere under 100 degrees. In our last measurement, we see that the water temperature has reached 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. So in the notes, we must have forgotten to write that the water is boiling and that there's steam. So there you have it. That's what happens when you heat or cool matter.